Hi everyone, I'm answering the top questions that you guys sent out via social media. It springs forth from fundamentals, technicals, and all of the things that's happening in the market. So if you sent a question, this video is for you. If you want to know more about the markets, this video also is for you. I hope this video gives you so much value so that you can win and you can trade the markets with confidence. So check this video out. Hi everyone, this is Marvin Germo. If you're new to this channel, subscribe, smash that bell so you get updated every time I release new content about the stock market. The goal and the heart of this channel is for you to know how you can win and you can trade the markets with confidence. So enjoy the rest of the video. Hey guys, so I'm on my way walking back home. All of my meetings are done. I did like five meetings across the day now, but what I did also on my way uh, at some point this morning, I sent a bit, I sent a question asking about uh, some questions that you guys want me to answer. So I'm going to answer some of your questions and while I'm walking, we're going to try to go through them at least one by one and I hope it gives you as much uh, value as possible. So first things first, uh, how to know if the current, this is a question from Hernan Garbasa Slim, how to know if the current trend is more likely to continue? So that's a question about technical analysis. No? The goal of all of this is if you are using technical analysis, basically start to forecast. The goal of all of this if you're using technical analysis, basically is to follow what the charts are telling you. That's why it's very, very important that you need to know how to draw what your trend line is. You need to know how to draw your support and resistance because as long as those support and resistances, as long as those trend lines are not broken, you don't have to sell, you don't have to do anything. So it's not about forecasting, it's more about just looking at the charts for what it is. If the trend lines are not broken, you don't need to sell, you don't need to do anything. Next, Walter Eric C is asking what crypto is relevant for 2019. Then I ask what kind of crypto is talking about Bitcoin. Uh, I, I really believe this. Blockchain, cryptocurrency, and Bitcoin are still in, in, on its early stages. It's very, very early. It's, hard for us to know what will it be in the future we don't know we can't predict if it will be the currency of the future or it will be nothing at all or if there will be another currency that will uh, somehow replace it i always give this analogy that uh think about social media 2004 friendster is like bitcoin friendster was the first cryptocurrency that came out but we don't know if there will be a new uh platform like facebook that will replace uh that will replace bitcoin so what do I do with this? If you're asking what should be your style and your narrative when, you come, when it comes to investing. Uh, if you want to invest in it, as long as you have excess money, excess funds, profit from profits from profits of your other investments, by all means, put a position that you think is something that you can tolerate if it goes to zero. So that's what I'm doing. The reason why I can invest in Bitcoin is because uh, if the stock or if that position goes to zero, I'm okay. Because I'm not putting money that I borrowed. I'm not putting money that's for the stock market. I'm not putting money for business. It's an, it's an amount that's specifically just for Bitcoin. So there, next. Uh, from a top fa fan in Facebook, Marian Ambrosio. She's asking, if you are a long-term investor, how many years do we hold the stock? So essentially, you know, for me, uh, context of long-term is that uh, at least 10 years. Because, why is it 10 years? Because please remember, there's possibly a, an economic crisis that will be that may happen in 10 years. Buying a stock, knowing that uh, you're in it for the long term, if you come in at a time where a recession will hit, you still have enough time to recover. That's my context about it. Can you can you have a shorter time frame? Of course, but you have you have to trade as well, and you have to be very 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 specific about valuations. The cheaper it is, the better it will be if you know how to use valuations very well. Then. She's asking, what's the ideal percentage gain before you sell and take profit? So the answer to that is basically this. Uh, I don't sell based on percentage. I don't sell based on the possibility of a gain that I'll get there. My trigger to sell, basically, is from fundamentals. Meaning, if the fundamentals change, if the fundamentals are not as favorable anymore, meaning, for those who attended Stock Smart Sessions, you know what I mean, that suddenly from a company that's starting to grow, it starts to mature, it starts to decline, I sell. Or if any of those financial ratios start to change, I sell as well. Or if valuations wise, the valuations also change not, that it's not any more uh, undervalued than it already hit what it's supposed to be, I also sell and take profits as well. So there, what else? Uh, 
JR Marina is asking any recommendations on good term insurances in the Philippines? Uh, you can scour around, no? Uh, term insurances are generally cheaper, but you can check. Also, my technique is always I want to go with the bigger ones because the bigger ones normally have, uh, should things go bad, it's the bigger ones that are normally stable. So you can search what are the top five companies that issue out insurances from if you're talking about life insurance you talk you look at the top five life insurances in terms of assets or in terms of sales or in terms of net income because normally when financial crisis would hit it's the smaller ones that get uh, normally hit so something like that next uh, uh, sir son sir about payasian any advice I'm not too familiar with it so here's 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 the context. Anytime you get something or you get offered something that you don't know what it is or you get offered something and then you don't know uh, it looks too good to be true or context known is also, hmm, even though you studied it, you still don't know. You can't explain how you're going to make money off of it or it looks a bit shady. Anytime you feel discomfort, anytime it's something that you think it's not okay, then just stay away from it. You don't have to uh, force yourself. You always have to understand that every time you invest, it's your hard-earned money eh? that every time you invest it's if it goes down it's something that you could have used for something else that would have been uh it would have been a bit safe na kumita sana kayo doon please remember don't rush a lot of people lose money because they invest in something that they do not understand even whatever whatever investment it is it might be a legit investment or not a legit investment but uh if if kung legit investment nga nalulugi mga tao how much more if Hindi siya legit investment. So spend the time to study. Spend the time knowing what you're investing. Because if you don't spend the time knowing what it is, that's where uh, you lose. But even if you lose knowing what it is, at least it's better to lose based on your own terms. It's better lo to lose also based on the strategy that you have employed. <laughs> I have my bag with me, so it's harder to uh, vlog while doing this. Anyways, uh, this is this is an interesting question. No, I don't know if you see this, <coughs> but this is a question from Wesley. Uh, Balneg. His question is, Hi there Sir Marvin, is it a good decision to withdraw my stock proceeds and use it to put up a business? I got a hard time to decide to quit my job and to do business using the proceeds. But what worries me is the consequences of losing money and my job if my plan doesn't go doesn't go well. On the other hand, if I quit my job and could not couldn't start a business as it requires time, as it requires hands-on and ample time, any advice will be appreciated. Wow, this is an amazing question. Huh? That's why I'm gonna sit first for a bit. Uh, number one is basically this. Uh, number one, you have to understand this. If you are starting your own job or if you have a business, uh, what what you need to consider is the amount of time that it will take, tama ka, that it will take a lot of time for you to be able to uh, start the business on your own. What does that mean also? Uh, you need to amount, you need to allocate a specific amount of time for you to be able to be good about it. So. What I would suggest though is do not quit your job because it's nicer to still have a steady stream of income first uh, so that kung may risk man yun, you still get hedged because you have a job that will give you cash flow. Para meron ka pa rin pangaral sa anak mo, meron ka pa rin uh, bangkain, you won't, go, you won't go hungry kung may mga nangyaring ganun. Uh, what I would suggest is since you have vacation leaves, my suggestion is use all of the vacation leaves at the starting phase of the business. My suggestion is also use all of the uh ingay naman nila guys sobrang ingay nila anyways uh aside from using all of the vacation leaves try to figure out also uh aside from knowing when aside from using the vacation leaves kung pwede ka magpaalam uh, ask your boss if you can take like a sabbatical or at least a an additional one two three months na na way for you to uh, to get unpaid leaves also while the business is being set up so that at least uh, you still have a job and you still have a fallback plan as well or another option that you can do is this uh, try to save money uh, that will give you one year's worth of operational expenses meaning while the business is still trying to be uh, it's still not earning it's still not profitable uh, you still have enough money to be able to catch you uh, just in case things don't go well sa business mo so uh, what, that's a good way for you to buffer it. But if you want to be more conservative, two years worth also, tapos simpliyan mo muna yung buhay mo habang nagsistart yung, uh, yung business as well. So, ganon. But sa akin ha, always, it always has to be an amount of money that you don't plan to use for a very, 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 very long, long period of time. So, next, there's another question naman from 
Ajian or Obidaniela is asking, how do you put up your own? What's this? How do you put up your own investment fund? Uh, or how do you start investing in stocks using pooled funds of other people? Is it a viable option as a business and career? So please remember this. Uh, anytime you start handling other people's money, you need to have a license that you, you sh you're soliciting funds. And that's what's uh, differentiating the ones that are scamish or the ones that are not legal is that they don't have a license to uh, to hold funds of other people. So, yun, uh, I don't know what are the regulations for it. My, my suggestion is you go more, uh, you inquire with the Securities and Exchange Commission, but essentially is you're, you're going to be a fund management company. There are some companies that, that trade and handle funds, but they don't solicit. The problem there is if you solicit funds already from people, that actually means that you need to have a license that you are allowed to solicit money from individuals, especially in the Philippines, and having scamming. So uh, that's why the SEC, uh, the Security Sense Exchange Commission is very, 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 very strict about it. Anyways, next. Michael Ermita Ramos. Kindly interview a businessman, politician, or politician businessman dahil sa ipapasang batas na ituturo na sa school about financials para maangat ang financial literacy sa Pilipinas habang bata. Sige, I'll try to see, no? Sino yung pwede, sino yung available who wants to also share. Uh, please remember this. That's why... I honor the business people who would go into the vlog you know, because not uh, not every not everyone that's good in business wants to share. Not everyone also who's good at what they do like to give out information. That's why I honor the ones that uh, go into the vlog and share their ideas because uh, so for me that's very 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 uh, nice. You know that people who are good at what they do sh they they share their thoughts and ideas to inspire and encourage other people. Next, Paulo Josuena. Institutional buying and how it affects the move of the stock. Please remember this. Um, the markets are all about supply and demand. Meaning, if it's about supply and demand, institutions have a large amount of money. So if institutions are buying, meaning it has it puts a pressure on the buy side, more buyers bring the prices up, more sellers bring the prices down. So if institutions are strong enough that they sell a large amount of money, it could bring the stock price down. Or if they're buying up a lot, also it can bring the stock price up. Next, Jennifer Mapa. Please do a vlog on what it looks like on the trading floor during trading. Please remember, iba na ngayon. Uh, we're not like where it was a few years ago that everything is not yet online. Everything now is online. That everything that, that can be done uh, in the trading floor is now done via the computer, via a desktop, via the phone. So there are a lot of brokerages nga that, are, that are not anymore the trading floor. So uh, medyo tahimik na siya ngayon because everything is based on computers already. Next, uh, Trisha Nanyaska, how to read stock charts so you can trade any market in the world. Uh, Trisha, I have so many videos about it. You can go to the playlist of technical analysis in my YouTube channel. Uh, just, uh, just go to my channel then go to playlist. You will see all of the videos there talking about stock charts. If you want it from a classroom perspective, a classroom setup, join us for Stock Smarts training sessions as well. Uh, the links are down below or in the description. Next, uh, Josie Gonzaga Taniedo. Hi Marvin, you posted about the PSEI earnings statistics a couple of weeks ago. I think perhaps you could expound on it. And to balance also stats on those who lose key factors of those who lose gaining 500k to 1, 1 million annually. Uh, please remember the stats that I posted there, that's not their earnings. That's the salary or that's the income range of people who invest in the stock market. It just shows that uh, it just shows the income brackets of people investing in the market. So the 64 uh, point something percent, that's the number of people who uh, earn at least less than 500,000 on a yearly basis. So there, uh, Kenneth Makapu guys, sir, ISM, di na raw magiging Udena. Uh, agenda on the annual meeting on December 10, change name to Dito CME Holding Corp. Tapos may acquisition sila Udena Communication uh, communication Media Entertainment under Dito. Ano po tingin ito? Sige, I'll make a separate vlog about that because I, I think that's something very, very, uh, I guess, uh, important to people to, to know as well, especially for people who own ISM stock. Nocilia Zerep. Sir, you Phoenix Petrol, you prefer shares. Sana ma-discuss nyo uh, ng preferred shares versus stocks versus bonds. I actually have so many videos about that. I'll put the link below also between stocks, bonds, and preferred shares. But I have videos about it as well. Uh, 
sige, that's I guess that's it for now. Uh, I'll try to make more and more videos based on the questions that you've asked as well. Thank you so much to everyone who participated. Uh, it's you guys who make uh, whatever I do fun. It's you guys who make whatever I do uh, something that's enjoyable as well. Because you, you know me, the reason why I create videos is so that you guys get educated on what you're supposed to do on the market so that uh, whatever you do and wherever you are in life and regardless of what your profession is, your business is, that you get to use investing to help you live the life that you want and to help you reach your goals of financial freedom as well. So I guess uh, we can end the vlog for now. Uh, all of the seminars over the next few weeks are down below, but I'll be in Davao, Singapore, Manila, and Cebu. If you're from the area or you know anyone from the area, I hope to see you guys there and I'm excited to Again, communicate as much as I can when it comes to the stock market. So this is Marvin Germo from BGC at night. I hope this video helps you trade well, trade strong, trade smart. See you all again soon, guys, and God bless you all.